Fred was about to tee off on the first hole when a second golfer, George, approached and asked if he could join him. Fred said that he usually played alone but agreed to the twosome. They were even after the first few holes, George said. We're about evenly matched. How about playing for five bucks a hole? Fred said that he wasn't much for betting but agreed. George easily won the remaining 14 holes. They walked off the 18th hole while George counted his $70. He then confessed that he was the pro at a neighboring course and liked to pick on suckers. Fred, shocked, revealed that he was the parish priest. The pro was flustered and apologetic and offered to return the money. The priest said, You won fair and square. I was foolish to bet with you. Keep your winnings. The embarrassed pro asked, Please, is there anything I can do to make it up to you? The priest said, Well, you could come to Mass on Sunday and make a donation. And if you'd like to bring your mother and father along, I'll marry them. A travel agent looked up from his desk and saw an older lady and an older gentleman peering into the shop window. Where there were posters of glamorous destinations around the world. The agent had had a good week. And the dejected couple looking in the window moved him to a rare feeling of generosity. He called them into his shop and said to them, I know that on your pension, you could never hope to have a holiday. So, I am sending you to a fabulous resort at my expense, and I won't take no for an answer. He took them inside and asked his secretary to write two flight tickets and book a room in a five-star hotel. The older lady and gentleman, as could be expected, gladly accepted and were off. About a month later, the little old lady came into the travel agency. And how did you like her holiday? The agent asked eagerly. The flight was exciting and the room was lovely, she said. I have come to thank you, but one thing puzzled me. Who was that old guy I had to share the room with? Two kids were arguing in the playground. My dad's a better darts player than your dad, said the first boy. No, he ain't, said the second boy. My dad got the highest score last week. Okay, okay, but my mom's better than your mom. Yeah, all right. My dad says the same thing. In an old part of town, there is an establishment often visited by a certain kind of people. In addition to numerous items on display, the purpose of which is unusual but well known to those who frequent the place. There are several small booths arranged in pairs, each pair sharing a common ball. There is a hole in this common ball about the size of one's fist. On one occasion, a young attractive woman enters the building. She looks around nervously, hoping that she won't be seen by anyone she knows, and slips into one of the booths. In the adjacent booth, on the other side of the wall, an old man is waiting, seated. The young woman closes the door to the booth and seems somewhat apprehensive. She whispers near the hole in the wall, separating the booths. I'm sorry, Daddy. 
I've been a very naughty girl. The old man on the other side, who has quite a bit of experience with such encounters, takes a deep breath and exhales with some emotion, anticipating a long and interesting encounter. He whispers back, You've definitely got the right idea, but it's forgive me, father, for I have sinned. If he had a dollar, who is the teacher? And you ask your father for another dollar and fifty cents. How much money would you have? One dollar, answered little Johnny. You don't know your basic math, said the teacher shaking her head, disappointed. Little Johnny shook his head too. You don't know my daddy. During World War II, a Nazi walks into a bar, looks around, and notices an older Orthodox Jewish man seated at a nearby table. Bartender, he says, around on me, for all your patrons, but not for the old Jewish geezer over there. As everyone in the bar receives their drinks, he looks directly at the Joe with a nasty smile. Surprisingly, the Joe nods his head and sends a warm smile back. The Nazi is somewhat miffed, as this was not the reaction he expected. So he goes back to the bar. Bartender, a second round for everyone but him, and this time take it all from the top shelf. He shouts. The Nazi again looks at the Joe and notices that he's still smiling back and even warmer than before. Is that Joe a complete fool or what? He asks the bartender. The bartender replies, Oh no, my generous friend. That gentleman is the owner of the bar. <laughs> 